is a story from a long time ago how the promise of the Lord came true. When the children of Israel found the promised land complete with milk and honey and a view. To get to this place took quite a little time. Well, it took 40 years to be exact. But a leader like Joshua could get his people there, even though a map and compass he lacked. The day finally came. The moment arrived when the River Jordan was in view. Joshua and company were on the east side in a quandary as to what to do. You see, across the water and down the road was the promised land we know. But there was a little problem, a tiny obstacle. It was a city called Jericho. more like a minor hassle. In fact, the city of Jericho was a major obstacle. Well, it was a threat to the future of Israel. This fortress is a classic example of a monumental edifice of logistical impregnability. I don't know if you know anything about fortresses, but we're talking big bricks, huge rocks. It was so high they couldn't get over. It was so low they couldn't get up underneath the, the wall. Yes, sorry. I think uh, we're a little bit uh, too caffeinated here. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had, I was, oh, sorry. Or to put it in, in Canadian, hey, that guy's quite a hoser, eh? <laughs> hey, I me, mean, me, hey, 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 yeah, okay. Just repeating what I'm hearing oh, over okay, there. Right, oh, okay, you said that. You said that, eh? Right? Said, uh, yeah, right? I'm, I'm good. I know I'm, all I'm, about it. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm really okay? sorry. Yeah, I'm, uh -huh. I'm okay. But you get the picture. The human odds were not on Israel's side, but they crossed the River Jordan nonetheless. For Joshua knew, and his people did too, if God was with them, they could win with less. So they reached dry land and got organized, but when they saw what they saw, they felt glum. For they discovered when they reached the walls of Jericho, the city was light up tighter than a drum. Oh, oh, oh. excuse me, excuse me, sorry. I know I said drum, but it, that's only a figure of speech, a, a, a simile, a, a mere analogy. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I think they know what I mean. Well, anyway, a plan was devised as to how the attack would be made. For six days, they'd march around those city walls with those thousands. It was quite a parade. <laughs> Well, by this time, some strange things were, oh, where was I now? Oh, yes, the seventh day, the day that Jericho would come to an end. The Israelites assembled with their thousands to fight. It was almost too much to comprehend. Imagine, if you will, the seven priests in the front with their trumpets all ready to blow. Then the Ark of the Covenant and thousands of men all waiting for Josh to say go. This day's parade had a different twist so that no one from the city would escape. The army had to march around seven times. Josh hoped by now they'd all be in good shape. Seven times? That's right, seven times. <laughs> As 
as the Israelites came around the seventh time, the fateful moment was finally at hand. Joshua called his thousands to halt and gave the cue to strike up the band. That's terrible. That needs practice. That's dope. That's terrible. We need to. <laughs> Joshua commanded the trumpets to the blow and the people to shout. Now by this time some strange things were happening as the ground around the city began to shake. The citizens of Jericho were also pretty shook as their walls began to crumble and break. Now the rumble reached 10 on the Richter scale as those quakes and tremors hit that town. Even Josh was amazed that his people were dazed when the walls came tumbling down. said before, this saga is more than just a story from a long time ago. For it teaches us that God keeps his promises, as anyone who reads his book will know. So don't ignore this thought or shove this lesson aside, for to do so, one would be a fool. Just remember it was God who had power enough to give Jericho some urban renewal.